Hellblade 2 Senua's Saga is a polarizing experience. So much so, upon sitting down to write this video, I still have mixed feelings about how I feel about the game. It blows me away in terms of visual fidelity and the level of cinematic detail, pushing the boundaries of graphics, and it honestly lives up to that next-gen title. But it comes with a cost. That being a shorter overall runtime, a narrative that has some pacing issues, and gameplay that feels like a step backwards rather than an evolution of the first game. Over the course of the video, I hope to explain some reason why, and due to the short runtime and wanting to avoid spoilers, it's going to be quite hard to do that with a narrative game. So what you'll see on screen is gameplay from the first two hours or so of the game. It's safe to say Ninja Theory has really showcased what a true next-gen visually stunning game looks like. I'm not going to sit here and explain all the technical jargon and the different aspects and how they're actually doing it, but what they are doing is incredible. And I can't really describe how it looks on YouTube. You need to actually play the game yourself to see how gorgeous it looks. But gorgeous being one word, stunning being another, and photorealistic are a few that I would use to describe Hellblade 2. Seeing incredible close-up shots of some of the characters in the game, seeing their pores and the roughness of their skin, the wrinkles, the dirt that's on them, water and blood dripping down their face, the small hairs on their face, it's outstanding. Lighting also plays a good role here because it enhances the detail, and it's especially apparent in combat when surrounded by flames and lighting that really showcases how the visuals look. There are some beautiful serene shots of the Icelandic countryside, and then it goes into these dark, gritty, horrific interiors. With how good the game actually looks, it's hard to tell the difference at times because of how well the game seamlessly transitions from cutscenes to gameplay. Ninja Theory have tried to capture that movie-like experience with all the interactivity of a game, and I'll say that they actually succeeded at this and giving us that experience. The mocap during cinematics captures every emotion and detail that the actors are trying to portray, the camera work and sweeping shots, are great although i'm not a massive fan of the black bars on top and the bottom of the screen to give you that cinematic movie vibe it just didn't sit well with me i don't know why they did that like it could have been done without it and they still could have got the same experience i maybe understand that it could be just as a cinematic point of view but it didn't really land with me there is a deep conversation to be had about movies and games being blended together, which I won't touch on here, but I do think that Ninja Theory did an outstanding job of giving the experience that they wanted to create. To the point where I thought they had actually spliced real footage into the game, and I'm not exaggerating, there's a part where two characters go to hold hands, and I thought it was actually a real video that they'd put on screen and they spliced between it. And I've not even mentioned the crazy photo mode that can be used at any time in the game during cutscenes, during gameplay. The level of detail that you can see in this photo mode is amazing. The hyper-realistic approach to visuals is the selling point of the game. Although on the Series X it is capped at 30 FPS, and on PC I was able to run it at 60 FPS, which is even more visually impressive when the fact that you don't get any minimal performance hiccups. I actually dropped it down to 30 FPS to see what the difference was, and it ultimately wasn't that bad. It was obviously a lower frame rate, but the visuals were still there. It also certainly helps to pair your visuals with incredible audio in the game, which is top-notch once again. From the voice acting to ambient sounds, it's hard to describe the feeling that it gives you, this kind of like goosebumps that you get, and I got that in the first game, and it's no different here. If not, it's been improved because they've got this new 3D spatial audio technology that they're using alongside some returning and additional voices in the game. Hellblade 2 certainly does a lot of things right in this regard, but it also has a lot of flaws that I want to discuss. The first of those being its very short runtime. My playthrough clocked in at 5 hours and 30 minutes at a pretty normal playing pace. 
in comparison to the first game which is between eight and a half hours nine hours it's roughly three hours or so less and while i don't have an issue with shorter games in general it certainly affects the narrative here in hellblade because it never really felt like the game kicked into gear or i was kind of waiting for the game to and then it did and then the game ended and it never really captured that feeling that i got in the first game there is a deeper discussion to be had about the cost per hour of gameplay and how much you're paying for an experience because this game does come in at 50 dollars for five hours worth of gameplay and also it's taken them seven years to create so it is a longer discussion that you can have but i think that's better for a different video but here, I do think that it affects the narrative. And for Hellblade 2, the narrative is very important. To keep things simple and not to uh, give away any spoilers, the main purpose of the narrative this time around is Senema trying to fulfill her promise or keep that promise whilst also dealing with grief and regret on a deeper level, as opposed to the first game, which was a whole cacophony of mental issues. Upon finishing the game, I don't think I connected with the game as much as I did the first game. Maybe the message didn't land with me this time, or maybe it just didn't make sense with how the pacing was. But the funny part about it is I actually connected really deeply with some of the story beats. It got me close to tears and I got a really emotional connection. The overarching narrative didn't really kick into gear for me. I didn't have that connection. It was more moments that I fell in love with rather than the overall narrative. Could this have been because the game was shorter? Did they need to add more flesh to the bones of other characters, you could say? Or was it just me not feeling as impacted by all of it? It was just small moments, as I say. This seems to be the discussion from some of the other reviews I had looked at before writing. Some people land in the love it portion of the narrative, and others don't connect with it at all. I'm kind of a bit of both. I don't really know how to feel about the ending of the game, so I'm not going to talk about it here because it's going to be spoilers. So I can't really explain how I felt at the end of the game. I will say, though, the performances of all of the actors was amazing. I think Milena Jurgens, I think it's how it's pronounced, put in another phenomenal performance as Senua, as well as the supporting cast. And it doesn't really feel like it took a step backwards per se, but maybe a revisit or an additional playthrough could help me understand the game a little bit more. But that's for another day and for another video. What I can talk about a lot more in detail is gameplay, which is split into combat and puzzles as it was in the first game. Puzzles were one of my favorite aspects of the first game, using the environments to complete runic symbols on doors, and that's still present here, but not as often. There is puzzles that involve shifting between realities and allowing Senua to move between areas using that mechanic, but it felt more like busy work this time around, rather than an engaging puzzle that actually made me think. Maybe I'd just become a little bit too used to them after the first game, but it never truly stuck with me or challenged me like I was kind of hoping for. This is what I meant about the game not being an evolution on previous mechanics. Now, I'm not looking for the game to, you know, throw the runic dictionary at me and learn and decipher each puzzle, uh, but to expand on these puzzles and give them a little bit more nuance. And that may be down to it being a shorter game as well, but... I don't really know. When I mention pacing issues, this is mainly felt in the level design. You tend to be walking between areas a lot, and then there are combat encounters, but sometimes they don't always feel right, and then sometimes they do, and then the game throws some interesting set pieces at you here and there, and they're actually really good. They're quite unique. They require some timing. There's a mixture of environmental things that they showcase and like a gameplay element as well and it changes up the pace of slowly plodding along through stuff and i wanted more of that because it reminded me of the last half of hellblade one combat on the other hand feels like it's been pulled back the most while i appreciate it looks and feels more brutal and weighty it feels like we've had certain parts stripped away for example, not being able to kick or do combos that flow into one another. And, you know, you could be just 
fast attacking three times and then dodging in this game rather than doing some pretty cool unique combos parrying feels awful in this game compared to the previous because there isn't a clear or distinct visual feedback like in the first game some enemies will stab at you with a red symbol which you kind of want to avoid but then they'll sometimes uh, strike at you with a like clear white and sometimes if you don't get the timing of that right or you just do the timing for it sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't like i don't know whether i've got the timing wrong it just doesn't feel like it's accompanied with a good visual animation for the timing window and it doesn't feel quite right they have made it also more one-on-one -on -one based this time around as opposed to the previous game which is actually a little bit of a better change because the camera work in the previous game was a little bit off so having it as a more 1v1 close encounter does work for this game but the other combat stuff doesn't and a lot of the encounters can feel quite repetitive when you are in this and it doesn't feel like there's any player expression that you are having when you're fighting and it feels like i've just kind of got to the end of the story in this game unlike how i felt at the end of senua's sacrifice where i really improved at the combat system it showed i understand that they are going for the cinematic approach but it really didn't mesh well with the combat feel it looked incredible and a load of the animations and finishing moves were awesome but it felt like a step back rather than an evolution on the previous title i like a lot of hellblade 2 but i'm finding it hard to love it in the same way i did the first game maybe my expectations coming into this were off and it was going to be a similar experience just kind of upped in fidelity i mean i did call the previous game an immersive masterpiece so maybe i was holding this to a little bit too of a high regard so that's maybe on me but i still stand by all of the things i've said it's an incredible visual achievement from top to bottom from ninja theory it's something that i can really commend them for there are discussions to be had about how long it takes to make a game the length of a game and what can be sacrificed to make a visually stunning game hellblade 2 will be in those conversations it didn't quite satisfy me the way i wanted it to i liked it but i didn't really love it and i think you'll fall in one of two camps when you look at this game depending on which i'll give you my final verdict on the game if you didn't like the first game then you won't like this one and i say i don't recommend this as i do with a lot of other games if you did like the first game i would recommend playing this purely because you will be impacted more from a narrative point of view and you can kind of see the differences as for my final verdict on the game hellblade 2 senua's saga is hit or miss this is my new in the middle verdict rating that I've had to come up with because this is the first time I've had to really make one of those. But that's where I am with it. I like a lot of it. I love a lot of it, but I dislike a lot of other portions and I would recommend it for some people, but not for others. So that's where we're hitting. We're going with the hit or miss verdict, which reminds me, I actually need to do an updated like review score video and I'll put it out on the channel at some point soon, like a really quick video. But that is hellblade 2 the review is done thank you very much for watching my channel and taking my opinion into account about the game appreciate it very much if you've enjoyed this video hit a like on it subscribe to the channel if you want to see a bunch of gaming related content on the channel in the future and keep up to date with all of that and as always this has been it's jimbo and i'll see you guys next time